Dragons are cool, so logically, if you want your videos to be cool, you need a dragon. I got you. Whoa, what is that? So when you're filming your footage, there are two things you want to keep in mind. First, you want to make sure that there are objects you can track. And second, you want to make sure that there's good contrast between the foreground and the background. This will make life so much easier in compositing. So with my footage, I'm going to right click, make a new fusion clip, and jump into fusion. So first, we need to track the motion of our footage. So I'm going to hit shift space and add a tracker node. Now I'm just going to find an area with good contrast. Now we also want to track the rotation of our footage, so I'm going to add another tracker and bring that to another place. I'm going to change the adaptive mode to best match and just track that forward. All right, so that finished tracking. So to see how this went, I'm going to go to operation, change it to match move. Then I'm going to bring down some text and put something random and plug that into the tracker. Then I'm just going to move it over to where my trackers were and press play to see how it looks. So that is tracking nice and smooth for me. So I'm going to get rid of that text. We don't need it now. So now let's import our Dragon 3D model. So the one I'm using came from Paint 3D. It's a program that came with my computer and it has tons of free 3D models. I just made a whole video on how you can download models from it and import them into Fusion. So if you want more details on that process, you can check it out right here. So for now, I'm going to go to Fusion, Import, Olympic Scene, and then just find my model. Press OK and bring that up. So if we bring that to the viewer, I can press this to turn on lighting. Now it brought in our dragon. So in the media pool, I have the texture. So I'm just going to bring down the color map and the roughness map. So I'm going to add a blend node, plug the color into that and plug the blend into my dragon. So now it has the right color, but it is way too shiny. So I'm going to take the roughness map and plug it into this pink arrow right here. Now that makes it look much more realistic. Now, depending on your shot, you could add more detail with bump maps and reflection and stuff like that. But for this shot, it's going to be way off in the distance. So we really won't see any of that detail. Now let's add a camera 3D and a renderer and plug the renderer into the tracker, bring that to the viewer. So I'm going to unplug the textures for this step just to make things run a little bit faster. So after our dragon, I'm going to add a transform 3D. I'm going to set the X rotation to negative 90 and just bring it way back in the Z space till it's about the size I want. So now if we scrub through our timeline, you can see the dragon is moving with our footage, but there is a catch. So if I take our dragon and drag it off screen on this first frame, it looks fine. But if we go to a later frame, we can see it's being cut off by the edge of the frame. So to fix this, I'm going to change the scale to 0.5, but now it's too small. So after the renderer 3D, I'm going to add a transform and set the size to 2. So now it should look exactly the same as before, but if I drag it off screen this time and go to a later frame, now it's not being cut off. So in the render, you can see it has all this information and it's just being scaled up. But if you click on the transform, you can see this outer box. So it has all that information still. Now it is worth noting that if I add anything after this transform, like a blur, it's not going to work. It's going to be cutting it off again. So anything you add has to be before the transform. So now let's animate our dragon. So I'm going to play around with the Z rotation to get it facing the way I want. Then I'm just going to drag it down so that it's just kind of coming on screen. Put a keyframe on the X and the Y translation. Then go to the last frame and just drag it up till it's going behind these trees right here. So now if we press play, you can see it's gliding above these trees. Now this is a very simple animation. You can spend tons of time playing around with the keyframes till you get something you're happy with. I'm just going to go with this simple thing for the tutorial. So to add another layer of detail, before our transform, I'm going to add a Bender 3D, then change the axis to X. So now you see if I play around with the amount, it makes it look like the wings are flapping. Now the body is warping a little bit, but if we keep it subtle, it's not going to be that noticeable. So I'm going to go to the first frame and bring the wings up, set a keyframe, then go to the last frame and bring the wings down. So now I'm going to add some lighting. So in the render, I'm going to change the type to OpenGL and enable lighting and shadows. Then in the Merge 3D, I'm going to add a directional light. Now the thing with the directional light is if you move the light around, it doesn't actually change where it's coming from. But if I click on this and move the rotation, that'll change the angle the light is coming from. So I'm just going to match it with the sun in my footage. And since it's the sun, I think I'm going to bring up the intensity to 1.5, just so that there's more contrast between the highlights and the shadows. And then I'm going to add an ambient light, plug that in, just fill in the shadows a little bit. Now at this point, we can drag in our texture again. So now let's work to get it to match our footage better. So in the render 3D, I'm going to go to the output channels and check vector. Then in the image tab, I'm going to change the depth to float 16. So after that, I'm going to add a vector motion blur. So right off the bat, that looks pretty good. But if we look at our footage, you can see that there's this big movement going on, but there's really not that much motion blur going on. So in the vector motion blur, I'm going to bring down the amount to something like a 0.1. Now this is just for my footage. You want to look at your own footage and match the amount of motion blur that it has. Now this footage is pretty sharp. So I'm going to add a sharpen node. Now it looks pretty good, but if I press A, 
you can see it added an alpha channel to this. It doesn't look that bad now, but if I right click, go to options and uncheck checker underlay, you can see it adds this ugly black outline around it. And I really do not like that. So how do we fix that? So I'm gonna duplicate my media in, paste it down here, just copy paste, and then I'm gonna merge my tracker over that. So that got rid of the black line. So in the sharpen, I'm just gonna bring down the amount to uh, maybe 0.3. Yeah, I just wanna match the sharpness of the tree right here. I think I'm also gonna add a JPEG damage just to match my footage, bring up the quality. Now, all of these are just for my footage. These settings might not work for your footage, so play around with everything until it matches what you shot. Now our dragon's looking a little bit dark, so I'm gonna add the match tint node. So this node does not come with Fusion. It's a free plugin from Learn Now Effects, and you can get it on Reactor. I really like it. It works just like the tint effect in After Effects. So to start, I'm gonna check pre-divide post multiply down at the bottom. So then with my footage in the right viewer, I'm just gonna zoom in, find a part that's supposed to be black, then take this little eyedropper here and find a place that looks good. And then using the amount to tint slider, I can control how strong I want it to be. So if I turn it on and off, you can see what it's doing. It's really subtle, but it really helps sell that this is actually there. One of the biggest mistakes I see people doing when compositing CG footage is not matching the black point, and it really is an obvious indicator that this is not real. Finally, our dragon is supposed to be behind the trees, but it's in front of them right now. Fortunately, because I shot this on a really clear day, the sky is basically a giant blue screen. So I'm gonna copy my footage, paste it over here, then add the delta key here. So I can bring that to both viewers. And on this one, I can hit A. And then as I drag out with this color picker, it gives me a white and black image of what the alpha is. And then the mat tab, I'm just gonna bring up the threshold a little bit. Then I can take this and merge it over our footage. Now it's going behind the trees and it's really just the cherry on top that sells that the dragon is really there. And then finally, I'm gonna take it from the merge two and plug it into the media out. Now, a lot of the techniques that we use here can also be used to make UFO videos. And you can learn how to do that in this video here. 